What's up guys, we're going to go over another problem on Spodge called Bugs Life. Basically, Professor Hopper is researching a sexual behavior of a rare case of bugs. He assumes that they feature two different genders and they only interact with bugs of the opposite gender. In his experiment, the individual bugs and their interactions are easy to identify because their numbers are painted on their backs. You're now given a list of bug interactions and you need to decide whether the experiment supports his assumption of two genders with no homosexual bugs or if it contains any some bugs interactions that falsify it okay so um yeah so yeah so basically you're given the interactions between two uh between bugs and you want to say if uh if there's any homosexual bugs so if there's a relationship between uh two uh, the same two people of the same gender yeah so that, that's basically what you want to see. If there's a relationship between two people of the same gender. Okay, so um, this is actually not a hard problem. Um, if you understand what a bipartite graph is, then you would be able to do this problem very easily. So basically a bipartite graph is just a graph where you have, you could split the graph into two sets where they don't share a similar vertex and every vertex from one of the set c connects to a vertex to another set, right? That's what a bi bipartite graph is. And uh, I think I sh I'll show you like a picture here right now. Um, but yeah, that's basically what a bipartite graph is. So now basically all we have to do is just check to see if uh, is just read in the graph and check if it's bipartite or not. So one way to check if it's bipartite or not is actually just uh, to run BFS, breadth first search, and then just color every single uh, vertex with its neighbor, with its opposite, with a opposite color, right? So with a neighbor. So like you're going to, what you're going to do is you're going to have like, um, in this case, there's, um, in this case, this problem, we're trying to find like homosexual, non-homosexual bugs, right? So what you could do is um, you could have like, you start out with a vertex with a bunch of, uh, you pick one vertex and you start out in your graph and then you label this color, let's say H, right? For like, I don't know, homosexual. And then every every other neighbor that, that's surrounding your homosexual bug, you say it like, I don't know, G. I don't know, you label G. And then, then, then after that, you go to every neighbor and then you color its surrounding area with the opposite color again. So you basically just keep, uh, you you color one color and then you color the surrounding neighbors with a different color and then you basically repeat this color there's one color color the surrounding neighbors of different color so then in the end after all your vertices are colored if one of them if uh, one of them actually ha has uh, the exact same color of one of the same neighbors if one of the same neighbors have like the same color then it's not it's the, the graph is not bipartite so you can't actually uh, it can't actually have a bipartite graph. So yeah, that would tell if uh, you could actually have a homosexual bug or not. So yeah, basically that's basically how you solve this problem. Um, I'll just show you guys the code now. So here's the code. Um, this part we have we have the main and then we have the care uh, the the variables input and then the number of test cases. Okay, so what I did here is uh, for every test case I read in a test case. I'm going to read in n and m. And an N and M, are, N is like the number of vertices and M is the number of edges. So what do I do next? Um, I'm going to use an adjacency matrix because for this current uh, implementation that I did, I use a adjacency matrix for to check if it's bipartite or not, because I think it's easier in this case. But yeah, um, you could use an adjacency list. But yeah, so here I have a... Uh, G is equal to a 2D matrix with a size n by n. That's what I do here. And then here, what I'm doing is f I'm going to loop through for every edge, uh, for number of edges. I'm going to read in x and y. So x and y are the two two vertices that we're reading in, and then these are the two vertices that we're going to connect uh, edges to, right? So then here now, what I do is I subtract x and y by one both of them, because I'm actually going to index my adjacency matrix by zero instead, right? I don't want to in index it by one. 
I'm going to index it by zero instead. So I, I subtract one from both of them. So now then um, to connect an edge from one vert vertex to another, I do g of x, y is equal to one. So that says that there's an edge connecting between x and y. And I set g of y, x is equal to one. So that connects a edge from y to x. Okay, so now once we have that, in this loop I called solved and I'm going to pass in I and I is basically just the the current test case number and the reason why I do this is because in the actual output you have to for every test case you have to print it out if it's suspicious or no suspicious right for in case if there's a if there's homosexual bug or no homosexual bug right so that's why I have to pass in I for the current test case number okay so here I'm going to go in my solu solution my solve method here um yeah so here like i said before we have to print out the scenario and then the number and then the print out number and then a colon right so this prints out the scenario number right so now here well here's what i do um i have this boolean called done is equal to true and i set that in the first place to basically check if it's bipartite or not right and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go through every single vertex in my graph. So for every I zero to N, and I'm going to check if from this point on coloring it, is it bipartite, bipartite or not? So then if it's bipartite, then I just, um, I just break, right? I break out and then I just print out uh, suspicious bugs are found. So that means, uh, uh, yeah, wait, yeah, wait. Okay. So yeah, yeah, wait. So here, um, if it's not bipartite, right, then I said done is false and I break. So then that means uh, no bugs were found, right? That means there's no homosexual bugs that were found. Uh, otherwise, I have to I print out suspicious bugs are found. So that means there, you can have a homosexual bug in this case. But yeah, um, that, that's basically what you do. And then I'll just show you guys the bipartite method. So here's the bipartite method. So here we have a... Uh, the source vertex, it's long, long source, which is like where you're starting from. And then here, what I do is I create, um, this is basically the size of a, uh, number of vertices. I create an array of color array and it's filled with the size of number of vertices. And I set it to negative one first. So all the values in my array have negative one. Okay. Then what I do is I color the first one, one. Uh, so the first vertex here, I color it one right from the source node node is one. Then I create, instead of doing recursively, I'm, I use a queue. So this is like breath for search, but with a queue. So I use a queue and then I push the starting vertex onto it. Then what do I do? I check while it's not empty. So if it's not empty, I'm gonna take, take the first vertex in my queue and I pop it and I remove it. That's what I do. Now, if the, uh, this is just a, like a base case. Um, if you haven't, so this is a case if like you have an edge, if you have a vertex and it's connected to itself, then it's not bipartite because uh, remember a bipartite graph cannot have an edge connecting to itself, right? So that's why you have to return false. So this is if uh, if the current vertex has another, has an edge connecting from itself to itself, then return false. Okay, now, now this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to loop through uh, all the values of my ver all the vert vertices, right? Then if there's an edge between U and V, right? So if there's an edge, this is basically just checking the neighbors, like going through all the neighbors. If there's an edge between U and V, um, what am I going to do? Uh, what I'm going to do is, and uh, yeah, and it's uncolored. So if it's, uh, if there, there's an edge between U and V and the current, current, uh, current vert vertex is uncolored, so equal negative one. Then what I do is I set my current color is equal to one minus color R at U. So the color at V is going to equal to one minus color R at U. So what does this do? This is basically saying like, if I, if I'm at if my current color of R U uh, is a uh, one, right? Then the surrounding neighbors that I colored it is going to be zero. So basically I'm just alternating between one and zero every single time when I'm coloring it. So then that's basically just going to color all the, it's going to color the current vertex with one and then all the surrounding neighbors is going to be zero. Then it's going to go to the next one, 
color it if it's zero color color all surrounding one so on and so forth okay all right uh then i have to push the current uh current neighbor into v because i'll go to the next one the current neighbor so that's why i do q dot push v okay so that pushes the neighbor so you could continue going forward all right now what i'm going to do is um if uh if there if if I already colored U and V, a color between U and V, and the color at V is equal to the color at U, right? So if basically what's 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 the saying is that if you have an edge between two nodes and they're the same color, then it's not possible. It's false. So you have to return false. So yeah. And then that's basically the end of it, and then just return true. So yeah, that's basically the gist of the code. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Free comment, subscribe. I'll just check you guys later. Peace.